Hey, good morning. I'm going to share with you today on Galatians chapter 2, justification by faith. It is a very important subject. Oh, we are not justified by works, but by faith. But how do you sustain that? So let's, let's unpack this. Galatians chapter 2, uh, verse... Uh, verse 16, yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law. You see that? We are not justified by the works of the law. What is the works of the law? Works of the law is we work in obedience to the law. The law is the Ten Commandments, the Torah, or the Word of God in totality, um, the scriptures. We trying to work to obey. So if Christianity is a work, then it is no Christianity anymore. You see that? Christianity is completed by grace. Uh, we work only because of the grace of God working inside us. Like Paul said, I work, I'm the most, um, I am the most unworthy apostle because he chose, I was persecuted in the church, but now I am chosen and called and I work hardest, harder than anybody else. And yet it is not me who works, but it's the grace of God in me that works. You see the secret of Paul? It's right there. If we try to do works to comply with the law of God, we will all be a lost generation. We'll all be lost because we can't keep up. No one can. It's purely the grace of God that can help us. There's no way we can do the obedience by the law. Therefore, you are not saved by works. Uh, you are not justified by works. You are not justified by works of the law. But you are justified by faith in Christ. Right? Verse 16. But through faith in Jesus Christ, so we also have believed in Jesus Christ in order to be justified by faith in Christ, not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. The word justify is very important here. Justification is, is like a legal word in the court. You have to justify yourself, why you did that or whatever. You know, you, you, in other words, we in the presence of God, in front of Almighty God, our Creator God, we're all guilty. I don't think anybody can dispute that. We're all guilty. However, if we want to get out of this guilt and this condemnation, therefore, we have to be justified. That's the way it is. We have to justify. They have to justify. We have to be justified uh, that we're not wrong, essentially. The only way we justify that we're not wrong, no more, no more being condemned, is not us trying to obey the law, which is the works of the law, but by our faith in Jesus Christ, who took the punch for us, who were condemned on our behalf by God, who was condemned by God on the cross. But he was guiltless, he was perfect, he was sinless. So he was a perfect man god and he was condemned on the cross but you know death cannot hold him within three days he rose from the dead god raised him up because he never committed any sin <laughs> he just was a sacrifice the lamb sacrificed for us because he loved us so much for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life see how do you have eternal life believe in him only one word believe you see, believe those have, you are justified by faith in Christ. You are justified by faith. Believe and faith is the same word. Okay, you, you believe in Jesus. You have faith in Jesus. So people diminish the word belief because you know, even demons believe that Jesus is the son of God. They ain't, go, they ain't not going to have it for sure. However, this belief in Christ we are justified by faith in Jesus Christ. See, there's a change. There's an interplay of words. You are for God. So whoever believes in Him shall have shall have eternal life. 
or whoever have faith in him shall have eternal life. Same thing. So two words, believe in him and also have faith in Christ. Same word, same thing. But right, we're justified by faith in Christ. So that, you know, so we also have believed in Christ Jesus a lot. Same verse. In order to be justified by faith in Christ, we must believe in Christ. All right. So now, uh, this almost sounds like too easy, simply simplistic, and also uh, uh, questioned by a lot of people. Uh, I have Muslim friends who also questions why why is that so easy? You know, what's going on? And do people understand that? So here, let me explain a little bit more here. Now in um, verse 19, Galatians 2 verse 19. For through the law, I die to the law, so that I may live to God. If you don't die to the law, you have no chance to be able to keep up with the law. Verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is so much to unpack here. Let me just do a real quick couple of minutes to unpack this. You see when people say, that's all you believe and you go to heaven, that's it. You truly believe, have faith in Christ Jesus, you are justified before God. Nothing to do with what you've done. All you need to do is believe. But people argue that, okay, I believe. They say it flippingly and then their lifestyle is hardly changed or just go on to do whatever they want to do. That kind of thing. And it is just uh, not the best thing to do. So what I just want to clarify is that verse 20 clarifies it. When you believe, it means you've been crucified with Christ. That's it. And it is, it is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. You know, when you are crucified, you are dead. You, you, you were killed together with Christ. You know, you know what? It, so people go, what does it even mean? What do you mean by that? Okay, Christ Jesus was crucified 2,000 years ago, physically. But now, as we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we are crucified together with him spiritually, in spirit. Why you would say? Because when you crucify, you kill the flesh of sins, your carnality, your propensity to sin, your depravity, everything that is evil and bad about you become together in Christ and get crucified. And Jesus did that for you. So, so what happens when you believe in Christ, when you put your faith in Christ Jesus, your entire old self is being, so to speak, if you like, transported to the cross and being killed together with him spiritually. You may not even feel anything, but that's what happened. Spiritually, in the spiritual sense. You know, spirit, spiritual thing you can't see. You know, you can see physical things, but that's exactly what happened. It is so important that you and I understand that, but you may not even feel it. So, because, and therefore it says, it's no longer I who live. Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 2, it is no longer I who live. Can you say that? Can I say it? Can we say that? It's no longer we who live. It's no longer I who live. It, it's an identity crisis almost, right? Sounds like no, because it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. You will love it if Jesus Christ lives in you. The purest spirit the purest man of god a man purest man but most righteous holy man and most loving man everything you want in life is personified in him jesus christ and he's also god now he's ascended to heaven seated on heaven and by his spirit he lives in us essentially i live by i i live by faith in this uh it's no longer i who live but christ who lives in me meaning the holy spirit lives in me now you know, therefore, you struggle with sins or whatever you do. It's no longer you who struggle. You can always tap on the Holy Spirit to help you. I know we still struggle. Even we know that even pastors, leaders, we all struggle with that. But it doesn't change the fact that He continues to work in us. The Spirit of God lives in us. 
I live by faith in the Son of God. Everything is by faith, by spirit. You can't see, you can't feel it. You can grow into it. Who loved me? You see, I now live by faith. And the life now I have, I live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God. For if, for if righteousness were through the law, then Christ died for no purpose. We are totally, totally um, inhabited by the Spirit of God now, who loved by Spirit of Christ, who loved, who loved me and gave himself for me. The Lord bless you.